Our guest this morning in this segment of the program, uh, Representative Stephen Hartkin, joining us in the studio. In fact, I had a chance to talk to him a couple of weeks ago at an event that was really uh, more of a thank you from, I would say, the National Rifle Association, which has uh, offered him an endorsement this year. I think you mentioned that, too, while you were there. First of all, I think it's the uh, very first time I've been in studio with you. I think that's right. It's and good I, to be, thank you for having me. Well, hopefully we won't be a stranger in the future because I know there's a lot of stuff that goes on when it comes to legislation and people have sometimes a need to explain that to the public while it's taking place. Uh, but for uh, for those folks, of course, I, we can't say that those folks who don't know you because, as I understand it from my coworkers, you're somewhat of an institution and you were before you actually were elected to public office. But a lot of people that I've been talking with who are campaigning this year are using this as an opportunity for the so-called elevator speech. And if you were doing some campaigning at an event today or tomorrow or this weekend and someone walked up to you and they said, all right, why should I vote for you? What would you be telling them? I'd tell them that I'm the common sense conservative in this race. Uh, my opponent is uh, further to the right and uh, doesn't appear to really know the differences between different levels of government, local, state, federal. Uh, she seems to confuse those issues and I've been in the legislature now. This is my fourth term ending, and prior to that, did a lot of work with uh, state agencies. And so I'm I'm the kind of the guy who kind of people turn to to get a common sense perspective on conservative issues. Now that media background too that you have as well, I'm sure helps you when you talk about levels of government because uh, that was your career for many years was having to know who happened to be the highway commissioner versus who happened to be the state representative and then the U.S. representative. That's correct. I was with the media here as the publisher and editor of the paper for more than 20 years. So I've been in the Valley since the early 1980s. And after that period of time, you kind of get to know the players and the different issues, whether it's water or uh, guns on campus or whatever it may be. Uh, you got to feel for how the, uh, how the area thinks. And people come up to me all the time and give me a perspective uh, from their perspective. And that's good. You know, that's how you Keep your antennae up. Steve Millington mentioned in the last half hour that if you go east of the Mississippi River, everyone thinks Idaho is still the Old West and that it's almost anarchy, lawless, and gunfights in the streets and the like. But when you reference common sense conservative, how, how do we define that versus the public perception of what Idaho was like? Well, I think there's three or four things that people should keep in mind. One is low taxes. Two is limited government. Three is physical responsibility. We balance our budget every year. And four is a sort of an adherence to constitutional principles. And every bill that we deal with deals with one or more of those things, not necessarily in the same order, but they come up all the time. And so I think when people look at those different issues, whether it's Bibles in the, sc in the, in the schools or taxation or whatever it may be, uh, that's kind of the way that I look at it. I ask first, what do my, what's my conscience say? That's my first, my first perspective. Second is the Constitution. What does the Constitution say, both the state and the federal? And there are some differences. And then third, my constituents. What do they feel is important? It's sort of a 3C kind of uh, level of inquiry that I go through with pretty much every bill. What we've noticed on the national level in politics is people are looking for someone to kick the legs out from under everything and maybe start all over again. Uh, Randy Staples commented to me yesterday that he doesn't see that happening on the state level, and which is interesting because you would think if there was that dynamic going on, it would be across the board. Uh, but it doesn't appear that way. I mean, you're getting some feedback, obviously. You're out at various events. Um, are, are, are we sort of living in a bipolar political world at the moment? Well, I think certainly people have a lot of anger and mistrust about the federal government, and they definitely want to see change at that level. That's that's certainly behind the Trump phenomenon. Uh, at the state level, there are some isolated races around the state. Mine's not one of them, but there are some that are uh, sort of pit, uh, you know, different people from different perspectives against each other. But I think Randy's generally correct. It doesn't seem to have the the passion that we had, for example, two years ago when the top of the ticket governor, lieutenant governor, uh, was sort of pitted ultra-conservatives versus common-sense uh, conservatives. And the common-sense people won. Uh, they got 65 to 70 percent of the vote on virtually every race. 
And uh, so I think that was kind of telling is that Idaho people listened to the different perspectives, but it came down to managing the state and running the state from a conservative perspective, balancing the budget, uh, you know, often saying, uh, saying that bills should be considered carefully and over a period of time. People were, I think, pretty pleased with the outcomes. Twelve minutes after nine o'clock, our guest is State Representative Stephen Hartkin. It's, uh, well, going to call it 47 right now on our way perhaps into the low 60s today. You're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Top story with Bill Colley. Uh, going back for another session, if someone says to you, what is your goal or goals in the next session? I mean, you individually, what what are you looking forward to doing? What do you think we need to do? Well, this last session I worked uh, behind the scenes on a bill on workers' comp for firemen, which had to do with the cancer occurrence and whether they should be covered under workers' comp. And that was a bill that they had worked on for a long time, but it was really, it didn't it didn't make any progress until we really sort of looked at the parameters and the sideboards on that. And I think what we wound up with was a pretty good piece of legislation that added them and also volunteer firemen from places like Buell and wherever. And and that may need a little bit of tweaking. Beyond that, I certainly want to see some tax reduction. I've been sort of a strong advocate for reducing taxes on the Revenue Tax Committee. Uh, We haven't done as well on that side as I think we should. Uh, We're running more of a surplus. That means we're taking in too much. We should never let a year go by without a good tax decrease. And so I would hope that that perspective would, would, uh, would come forward this year, and I intend to be part of that. How does, I mean, you probably get this question now and then, how does a conservative come out of media? I mean, I, I started out in media as well as a, as a just, a, you know, the guy burning shoe leather on the street and chasing up and down stairways at courthouses and legislatures. I did quite a bit of that, too. Uh, and, and, and at some point along the line, is it, is it your upbringing or is it just a, was there a revelation at some point? Well, I, I write about it actually in my memoir, which is in the library, and you can buy it online from Staples' publishing company, actually. Actually, it was a series of small events, little things that I observed, a lot of reading of articles and uh, conservative perspectives of things. But mostly it was just a change in how I looked at the world, a sense that, you know, I was working hard to take care of my family and to provide for my future. And I began to question whether I should uh, give my votes to people whose perspectives were very different than my own. And so over a period of a number of years, I, I changed. It's interesting because people have asked me that question too as well, and I can't say it was one blunt event or it was just gradual events. It's really a several different. I mean, you can look at some blunt events and you can look at several different smaller events, fits and starts, and at some point you just say one day, this is what I am. This is, I think it's part of, of journalists mature just like everybody else. And I think as you move more into the, management side of uh, journalism and, uh, and and listen, go out and listen to people and listen to average citizens and particularly in, in smaller communities that are more, are more conservative like Twin Falls, uh, you send it, you tend to pick up some perspectives that maybe you hadn't, hadn't thought of much. Uh, I was a long time reader of the wall street journal and the national review and Weekly Standard and a number of other publications, and <laughs> I still am, and I enjoy those things very much. And I've I I read less and less of the New York Times and the Washington Post, and more of the other. We we have callers periodically that I will hear from, but it's a, this is one of those things that seems to be with at least a certain element of this community with the in migration, which I think is good. I think it's good to see development and and the build up, and you get better some services sometimes and hospitals, roads, et cetera. But there's a concern that a lot of the in-migration will change that conservative uh, flavor of this area and really the state of Idaho, and that suddenly we'll start looking more and more like uh, California. Uh, Are you concerned at all about that? Actually, I think it's going to be the reverse. The people who are coming here are coming here because of what we have attracts them. They want a more conservative community. If you look, if you talk to someone who's recently purchased a home here, maybe retired here or has kids, you don't have to scratch the surface very much before you hear a conservative perspective. They're leaving crime behind. They're leaving high taxes. They're leaving uh, liberal representation. They're moving here because of the opposite of those things. 
And I think that's been one thing that's actually turned the state more conservative than it was 20 years ago. Back in the day when we had occasionally Cecil Andrus as governor, I say occasionally because he did it a couple of times, and you had more of that, uh, that what they might call political balance going on. Yeah, that, happened, that change occurred in the mid-1990s. The legislature at that point was equally divided between Democrats and Republicans. It's now 80, 80% Republican, and that, occurred, that has occurred in the last uh, 15 years. There's another theory that says because we have we don't have that divided political uh, situation any longer, though, that that's why so many of you are seeing primary challenges is because the only way anyone gets ahead any longer in politics in, uh, in the state of Idaho is to challenge somebody who's already sitting in their party. I think that's correct. Actually, the one-party state phenomenon ha- happens on the other side of the ticket in other states, uh, particularly in the Deep South which used to be very Democratic at the local level, and now I've turned also Republican. Got about a minute and a half left. Anything that I've left off the table that you need to bring up this morning? I would like to have people call me or email me or contact me. I'm easy to find. I'm in the book, and I am pretty well known. Just if they have an issue that they want me to work with them on, uh, something they want me to be aware of, just call me and say, yo, Steve, I want you to be aware of this. With the media background, uh, you have some social media as well that you have at play in this campaign. I have a, a very extensive Facebook page, has uh, 1,400 uh, followers in my Facebook page, and I'm I'm on it almost every day. I was going to say, I meet people who are not taking advantage of that on the local level, and I, my advice to them would be this is almost critical. Uh, even though a lot of the constituents may be going about this in a more traditional way, you got to look for every person out there, right? You have to look for every person, and I find that the Facebook uh, presence is important. I also have a website. I have email. I have lots of different ways that people can contact me. It's important to be able to be available and in touch with your constituents. What's the website address? www.stephenhartkin.com. And you're off to a couple of events, uh, obviously, in this uh, last week. Uh, this is the, what you call perhaps the busiest time you'll see all year? It is a busy time of the year. Uh, I have a, a central committee meeting tomorrow night and a couple of things on Business Plus that I used to be the director of, economic development on Thursday, and so it's just one thing after another. Being a Republican, though, in the state of Idaho after the primary, you can all relax, right? In theory. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to thank you for coming by today. Thank you for having me. All right, we'll talk soon. It's uh, coming up on 20 minutes after 9 o'clock. Representative Stephen Hartkin has been our guest uh, during this uh, course of the program. Coming up, uh, I say, on 92050 right now, on our way to perhaps 64 today. Bill Colley with you on News Radio 1310, KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com.